Civilization 6, my favorite game, your favorite game. Well, it just keeps on expanding because this morning, Firaxis released three new leaders from China as part of their Leader Pass expansion pack. I, of course, have immediately hopped into Civilization 6 to play a game as one of these new leaders, and we are here today with Yonglo. Now, Sean Bean pronounced this Yonglo, Yonglo. I don't know exactly how Sean Bean pronounced it. I know it's not Yongle, but that's kind of how my mouth and brain pronounces these six letters situated in this way. Leisure is the ability we are looking at here. The rest of this is all part of all the China leaders, right? These don't change. Dynastic Cycle, Crouching Tiger, and Great Wall are all going to be there. Um, but Leisure is the one uh, unique to Yonglo. Yong oh, this is going to be a, a disaster trying to pronounce this, but that's okay. All cities receive projects where they can convert 50% of their production to food, faith, and 100% of that production if it's gold. So super cool that you can take your production if you'd like to and instead make that food, faith, or gold. I think that's great. We are going to be utilizing that to try it out. But the real ability here that I think is super fun is cities with 10 or more population receive two gold, one science, and one culture. So how I interpret this is that once you hit 10, you immediately unlock 20 gold, one, uh, 10 science and 10 culture because it's per each population. So you hit 10, you unlock that 20, 10, 10, right? And then every population after that adds a further two, one, one, right? So I think it's super cool to try and have, you know, a smaller, more tall empire of populations above 10 instead of a huge sprawling vast empire so any civ that has a more tall ability in civ 6 is great because it's a game you typically want to play wide all of the game settings can be found in the description below the important ones are popping up on screen right now so you are caught up uh, the main thing here that i thought would be fun is i have shuffled the tech tree because of the ability to gain kind of extra for the boosts i thought it'd be fun to see how many of these boosts i remember and how many we kind of just find accidentally when you shuffle the tech and civic trees uh, it doesn't show you the boost because it's kind of trying to hide where the tech is on the tree so i think this will be a fun little you know switch it up for us that we're not going down the same route in the tech tree i feel like this start is going to be great for us lots of production lots of food we want a high food empire to kind of get that population going lots of chops if we decide we need some wonders you know with a high population too pingala is going to be great so we have a lot of options here that i think are super duper fun but certainly not like an overpowered wonder start or anything like that so i think this is just perfectly acceptable uh, we are going to settle beijing here but if i had to go the entirety of 2022 with its morbid time which was awful please do not watch morbius uh it's gonna be we're in our yongle era now it's yongle time baby immediate decision to make chopping is going to be very important so i'd love mining we also need to know where the horses are for animal husbandry i think we are going to go animal husbandry first because the wonders that i want to chop out probably the oracle um we don't unlock that right away or i guess the, you know what doesn't matter because the the tree is shuffled so i don't actually know but i think we're gonna have time to unlock these horses in the tech tree here i'm gonna start with horses just so we can get some production some things to sell to the ai and then we'll go into mining for the fantastic chops and if we look at our kind of production queue here you can see uh, our abilities here so 1000 production 1000 production 1000 production it's going to convert half of our production into faith or gold or whatever when completed which i think is super great uh, for faith and food it's 50 percent for gold it's 100 percent. so uh, we will definitely use these later but for now we're going to start with a scout in terms of victory, I think a culture victory makes sense with Yongle, but I think we might go for a science victory if we can, just because we've done the, the last couple of games on the channel have been a culture victory. And I do want to, I do want to try something new. I'm like everyone else. I can get bored sometimes. I can get, I can get tired of the same repetitive culture rock band national park process. So maybe we'll go for a science victory. Always happy to see diamonds on the continent. So it's a very, very good luxury resource to have, but we're going to get a relic here, right? Void singers and 40 gold we do have chops there are a lot of chops on this map for sure we are going to need magnus but with the shuffled tech trees and me not knowing where governments are going to be i think i kind of need to go pingala for the extra culture just to get to a government assuming that just off the in the off chance that the government is locked like way down here somewhere i think we're just going to need pingala in this one all right but this time we're going to get a relic correct oh yeah and 40 gold again the good news is that's 80 gold that's like half a builder so that's going to be fine and we have some barbs down here that we are going to kill they're of the ocean variety though so they are not that scary i'm going to double scout this map here i would really really love to find some city states find some more goody huts see who's on the map see what i have to work with and then try and set up a science victory 
The horses are in. We got some just to the south of the city, which is perfect. I was hoping to have a couple of horses up here or maybe here, but such is life. Now it's settler time. We want to get our cities down right away. We want to get those populations up. I will build a monument. We will need a monument, but I think this settler is super important. In this game, we are going to be making a lot of trade routes that are within our own cities for the food to get the population up because that population up is going to give us the gold that we would get from the trade route. Hey! <laughs> we got our relic. Woo! Gundestrup Cauldron. It's beautiful. Ah, Harold's in this game. That's actually not that scary, assuming that he's not able to kill me with boats. If I'm seeing his scout, I'm assuming that I, he's not going to kill me with boats. So that's great. Hey, we got a free scout from a goodie hut. Well, triple scout. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if I knew we were getting a free one, I wouldn't have built one, but that's that's how it rolls sometimes, I think. For our potential Ruhr Valley, we have a really unfortunate river layout. This river that kind of cuts up here is not going to have enough mines to really get the production we need for the Ruhr Valley. And this one here, there's only this one tile river. It kind of cuts up, and this takes away a really good campus spot and isn't the best industrial zone. I still certainly want to settle this city before it's too late. You can see that we will run out of room if we don't settle it here, and this is just a wonderful city to have. I don't know if we'll actually end up doing this i think there might be a way to build the industrial zone here with the Ruhr valley over here potentially and still keep this campus so i'm going to keep my my mind open here but this is the type of city i'm trying to settle where there's lots of mines and production for this Ruhr valley for that science victory later in the game there are not a lot of really good pantheon options i am going to pick something a little kind of unique though just to kind of show you how it works and i've never really used this before so we're going to go for religious idols plus two faith from mines over luxury and bonus resources uh, so it's going to give us plus two faith on all of our diamonds tiles, which I just think is interesting. We'll see what we can do with that. I'm having a little bit of anxiety about confirming religious idols, a pantheon that no one has ever picked, but let's, we're gonna try it. I'm, I'm committing. Ooh, Shaq is in this game. If you could go and kill Harold so that I could settle these cities, that would be uh, very nice of you. Yo, our main man, Harold, is gonna build the Oracle before us. What a load of poppycock. Right, that is the irrigation boost for having built this farm. I think we're in trouble here. Like building this city here is going to be a huge challenge and going to be a real struggle. Oh, and he's already coming to kill me too. I I don't know about this, everybody. This could be really bad. All right, there we go. Taiwan is down and we have some issues. Pingala, you're heading up. That is your solemn duty. And then we're going to have to get this monument real fast. And I also think we're going to have to get a slinger real fast too to not you know die all right what i can do really quickly though is just go into beowulf i'd rather have a nancy to get us through the trees quicker but beowulf here uh, we're gonna get beowulf we're gonna put it in taiwan that's gonna give plus one loyalty for having a hero nearby uh, it's also gonna help stop him from being able to kill us i think let's build on these horses here so we can sell them to the other ai specifically shaka hopefully to give us enough money to purchase the monument in Taiwan would be ideal. I think we're not going to get the Oracle, which is really, really frustrating. I think he's going to be able to build it here, but we can still try and chop it out. We'll see how it goes. This is still an absolute waste of a good potential campus, but this is a slightly better Ruhr Valley setup potential. I'm going to keep playing with this. I don't like this. I didn't like the other one. I'm going to keep playing with this until we can settle on something we like. All right, Beowulf is here, so immediate, immediately getting moved to the city for sure. And we're just gonna hope that in the next 30 turns, he decides not to murder us. That's the that's what we're going for. It does seem like he's here more to kill the barbs than to kill me, which would be handy dandy. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna keep on hoping that's true. Oh, I think I just got this guy killed. Um, sorry, Mr. Scout, you're gonna die, but hopefully, uh, hopefully no one else dies at the hands of Harold. Yeah, Mr. Scout is dead. That's unfortunate. Big sad. Oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> even funnier is an unmet player built the Oracle and not, not even Harold. What a, what a racket. That's hilarious. That's, that's fun. That's exciting. I'm trying desperately to keep Taiwan on the board here, but it's not going well. That's a bronze working boost, though. We'll take that. Can I actually... One second, one second, one second. Let's actually go into bronze working, just, just to be safe. I'm trying... I'm selling my horses. I'm trying desperately here. Like, I just... Any gold to get to 240 to buy that monument is so helpful. And there's no great campus here, so another settler it shall be. And with that settler, we're going to try and head up to this high food area here. It's going to flood a little bit, but we'll get 10 population here, no problem. And then from there, we can yongle it up to the yields, baby. 
I'm going to try my best to get a trade route from Taiwan to its Yongle time because I need that one food so we can grow and hopefully lose less loyalty is the idea. We've met Zanzibar, obviously not a first meet, but at this point in the game, I would love this extra gold. So plus two gold, it shall be. I really want to save Beowulf's charges and its ability for Harold, but if Harold's not going to attack us and we've got these barb issues, I got to get rid of these barbs. So we're just going to eliminate them. Then I can move some of my other units in. Hopefully we can promote you to an archer and have a little more success here. Oh, Shaq is going to go kill Zanzibar. That's not very nice. I'm not a fan of that. The early empire boost is in. I would love to go through early empire here to build settlers more quickly, but we still haven't unlocked the government. And this was the whole problem with Pingala earlier. And um, we are going to build a specialty district ideally. So let's go through, let's go through the things we already have boosted, I think. I think I can eliminate the trade route might not survive, but I think I can eliminate this by getting rid of the slinger. And so next turn, that's gone, which is super nice. If I just move with the trader, the archer can hit me, but the uh, warrior can't. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it might get the job done. All right, bronze working is complete. This worked better than I expected. So we are going to be able to disperse this clan, which is huge. Get that off the board. Get the arrow score too. The other thing we haven't mentioned though is if Harold's in a golden age and we're not, we might lose Taiwan anyway. We are gaining loyalty here now, which is great. It means I don't have to buy the monument right away. I could get a builder instead and work the diamonds tiles, which might be more worth it, question mark, question mark, question mark. So we are going to have to see. I do think, though, this trader is going to make it all the way through. And we got some iron in the cap. I'm super stoked with that. Iron in the cap is great. Uh, unlock some good industrial zones for us in between two strategics. So cool, cool. We'll take that. That's good. Ooh, the Ifa Jalakalakal. <laughs> Where's that? I think it's way up here. Yeah, my scout up here has found it. Hey, that's arrow score, man. We'll take that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Harold, how can you possibly tell me my seas are unsupported when are unprotected when I don't have a coastal city? There are no seas. This is a lie. This is a fabrication. Uh, I would love to kill this archer, though. Uh, this warrior is just following the traitor to safety. I think we've settled here, though. I think we've settled here. I'm really tempted, honestly, to buy a builder instead of the monument, but I just think in general we are going to need this this monument to, to get by. Can I sell these horses for something? Two for 30 and eight? It's not really what I want, but I can buy the monument next turn at least. Not having anywhere in this giant middle section to throw down an aqueduct is really, really frustrating, but I have pinned out a few different cities here. A couple of coastal cities will be helpful. This city on all these floodplains will be a, a pretty early 10 population city, which is what I'm banking on. So we're going to go settle right here and then eventually we'll, we'll work our way around too. We are pretty isolated. So this is a good kind of a small section of the world for us to build our tall cities uh, if, even if we wanted to go super wide i'm not really sure we could so this is a fun little experiment for us we absolutely will need a campus here whether we like it or not but for now a builder to, to get some of these extra tiles will be great we do need the builder up here as well but instead i'm going to be buying this monument that'll help with the loyalty and then with that builder as well, we can always get this iron and then move it on up to Taiwan to get the diamonds too. Third city is going down. Jian is here, which is exciting. We're going to need builders everywhere, man. We're going to need builders everywhere to make use of all this. But monument, more culture, loyalty, those types of things. We got to get it done. Early Empire is in. I'm actually not going to build a settler this second. I'm pretty happy with our three cities for now by turn 50. That's pretty good. Uh, limit to name might be interesting. We're not really fighting barbs anymore. So limit to name might be helpful just for the moment to get a little bit of extra population. I will keep this production in though, I think. We, we really need a government though, man. Like so badly. I'm going to commit to this Pingala. I think we do need this culture to get to the government. I know it's only two population. It's going to be three soon. I don't even really want Pingala in this city, but such is life. We got to make do with what we got here. Um, let's get this iron and let's move on up to Taiwan. All right, this isn't perfect, but assuming we can get the dam down here, uh, ideally in this game, we're going to have high population cities, which means lots of districts. We have this kind of plus five industrial zone that's going to be great in its Yongle time. Um, but once we get this government plans, I think there's a lot of opportunity here for us to put some districts down. Might even swap the location of this government plaza to make some commercial hubs better. But I think this is a good kind of start. Um, so we can put the government plaza down here, but I think the campus for sure is going to end up going right here. So I think we can safely chop this out and start placing a campus. <laughs> Shaka is the world's worst explorer. There's still a goodie hut to his east. I'm trying to find out where all the other sieves in this game are. I don't think we're getting this 10 error score in two turns. 
So I think we are kind of stuck in this standard age, which is not ideal because I, if I'm, if I'm a betting man, I'm betting that Harold's in a golden age, unfortunately. Ooh, free, free recon unit. Sick. That's uh, another, another free scout. Awesome. And there it is. The classical era, please, for the love of Don't good golly, be in a standard age. Trust. He's only got three cities and he's in a standard age. So is Shaka. Thank goodness. Okay. So he's in a standard age. Things are great. Free inquiry is going to be great. Okay, good, 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 good. Things are grand. Things are great. We're having a good time. All right, you are going to chop out a campus. Yes. Okay, good. Now we're just going to throw this down real quick just to build a district for the boost to the government plaza. You are going to head up the road to Taiwan. That's great. We're going to try and sell the resources here. Not, not quite what I'm hoping for yet. Four gold is better. We'll sell that for four gold. That seems to be good. And we just really desperately need a government still. All right, well, our, our new scout just died um, for reasons. So, <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm a terrible, I'm a terrible um, safeguarder of my scouts here. But we're going to get this farm on this rice. Um, just more food is more population. Remember, we're trying to get to 10 population in Gianna as quickly as possible. And this should hopefully help with that. We are going to need neighborhoods later in the game too. I think that'll be fine. We're not going to worry about that for now. Um, but I should start pinning them out at some point soon just to make sure just to make sure everything's good and we do end up getting them, you know? I think it is time for Ilkum to get builders just a little bit quicker. I'd love to get another builder here in Taiwan. Once that's done, we are going to start building settlers again in its Yongle time. We still have all these cities to settle and we want to get that done ASAP. I'm starting to think as well that it, it was my intention to make this a uh, Pangea map. I'm starting to think I may have accidentally made it a continents map. <laughs> Whoops. All right, that state workforce boost is in. That campus is complete, which is great. We can now build this government plaza, which we're going to do real quick just before we go and grab the old... Um, what are we building? A settler. Before we grab the old settler, that's fine. And then here we're going to go into researcher. We still have not... We still have not found a government. If we're looking here, I have no idea. It's got to be here somewhere, which is really frustrating, but we got to keep on soldiering through. Let's see our Pantheon in action for the first time. We're going to mine these diamonds. That's going to give us the extra two faith, which is super cool. This is fun. I like this Pantheon. We're not going to build a quarry, so we can just hard tech masonry. That should be fine. Uh, getting walls in, in Taiwan is a priority, as well as getting the Great Wall somewhere. Maybe not. Maybe in the middle. Maybe this is where the middle happens. Once our borders fully expand, we'll just build uh, Great Walls everywhere. I have no idea. All right, second diamonds. Let's do it. Do we have the option to build an industry now? I hope we do. Ah, industries are unlocked at currency and currencies yeeted all the way back here in the tree. So that's why we can't build an industry. That makes sense. I, was like, I swear I turned this game mode on. Another issue we're going to have soon too is I need to start buying all these tiles up from a Herald because he's going to slowly kind of seep into our Ruhr Valley area, which would be very, very bad. Like no, no bueno, very, no good, very bad. Absolutely not. All right. There's no point in getting grants at the moment. And I don't think I want to go into Void Singers, although I might not have much of a choice. Uh, I think Owls of Minerva might be the one for us this game. Vampire Castles too. Also fantastic. I think the next obvious choice is going to be Magnus. Um, so let's take Magnus and move Magnus into its Yongle time for now, just to get him on the board. And then we're going to try and build settlers. Did I put the settler card in? Two turns till I can put the settler card in. That's a lie. It's like five turns till I can build the settler card in. We're not going to boost recorded history. We're not going to boost theology either. And I really do need a policy card change. Yeah, it costs 100 to, to change policy cards. And that's not super duper ideal, especially because I got all these tiles I need to buy. I'm going to buy those two, right? Just in case. But I want these tiles too, because these are all mine tiles. Gonna sell our extra diamonds though for 14 gold per turn, which is absolutely bonkers. And then uh, whatever people, yeah, Shaq is gonna give me this, which is great. Um, so more gold, more tiles we can buy, more more things we can do, more places we can level up. It's gonna be fantastic. I would like that industry though. We are going to go into Celestial Nav and then into Currency. Our next settle is going to be one of these coastal cities, but it doesn't look like either of them will allow me to work too ocean tiles to get the boost which is again kind of frustrating to be honest that we're going through here without all these boosts all right let's see if i calculated correctly i did we lived uh the problem with my calculation is that we're now not going to actually get into the uh into the thing into the encampment which is which is far from ideal and i think this builder do i want to stay in taiwan there's a lot i want to build in taiwan certainly a lot i want to chop out in taiwan we're gonna have to swap pingala and magnus at some point but 
for now, I think you're going to come down here. This is the food. We need our we need our food city to be leveled up. There is a reef over here where we can build a campus. So I'm actually going to bring this builder back and we're just going to build the, the campus over here. And from there, I can pin out a few other districts as well. There's not a ton going on here. Like there's no real good place for a, a theater square plus a... Uh, entertainment complex so the campus is going to go here for the immediate plus three but then we got this encampment maybe maybe getting an encampment's a fine idea i'm not really sure exactly what i want to do here but taiwan we got to keep buying tiles for sure that's, that's one thing i do know about taiwan while we're waiting we'll definitely build walls though i definitely want walls in taiwan i don't i don't want harold getting any fun ideas you know i might have miscalculated i might still die yeah i died anyway i miscalculated don't don't ever listen to me don't leave me with your units i'm just gonna get them killed it's time to buy tiles. Uh, I want the ones that are closest to his borders because I can fill in the blanks later. Might as well give Magnus a uh, provision for now. If we are going to be building settlers in the capital, might as well not lose population, which is great. Then we are going to come in here. Builders are great, but we are going to build that settler just a little more quickly. And I suppose we'll keep Limitane in for now, although the barb card might have been more useful overall. Okay, we have found the government, so we're going to head straight into there. We don't have a third city state, though. I think I messed up. I'm not going to lie to you. I think I I think I made a goof and, and accidentally made this a continents map, which, look, I don't mind at all. Let's have some fun on the continents map, but I just, it's not what I was expecting, you know? I'm still, I'm still in my tile purchasing era here, so we're just going to try our best to block off as many of these tiles as possible we do really need magnus up here i'm not gonna lie to you there's lots to there's lots to chop out there's lots to do uh, especially if we want to get yields on all these tiles because uh, we're gonna get mines here and those mines are gonna help the river valley later so we're gonna have to start working on that we can get food in taiwan from trade routes so that'll be how we get food here to get it to 10 population oh boy there's so much to do and i don't know when to make this swap because i can't make it at least till i get the government if i lose four culture per turn right now in the five turns that we're waiting that's just silly all right, you can see that I'm missing out on six gold per turn here to keep having this trade route, but I really need uh, I really need these cities to have high food, and the production is nice too, so we're going to do that, and that's going to help it grow, and that's how we're going to get to 10 pop. Once we get to 10 pop, we will get the gold from our ability, so I think that this is a good way of using our trade routes here. Uh, also, we can get the Magnus ability to get extra food from those trade routes, which we might want to look into uh, with our next governor title. All right, Celestial Nav is done. I a little bit frustrated that uh, it it's kind of completed in the way it was. Um, I do really want to settle this city because if I don't settle it soon, someone else will take it, but also this will become a city state. Uh, so I'm going to try and muscle my way into that city. I don't know how well I'm going to do here. I just need to kind of sneak up there and just settle it. Um, it'll be a technically coastal city, which is fine as well. Might as well go for the library while we are waiting. Uh, I don't think I'm going to go for the government plaza building that gives us builders. I'll probably go for the one that gives us amenities uh, in cities with governors. All right, we got a plus three error score here for the campus, which is nice. I'm trying my best to uh, protect this tile, but it's not going very well. So I'm going to have to vacate and just hope that through the grapevine here, this tile opens up again for me to settle on. While that's happening, though, I can I can get all these farms. All right, campus is down. Let's finish up those walls. I'd rather do it with limes, but such is life. I, I definitely want walls in Taiwan. I don't want to be bamboozled later in the game uh, with by a herald that decides I'm ripe for murdering. Currency is done, too, so we can get that diamonds industry, which is great. But the, the tile did open up. We are good. We are going to be able to settle here. Uh, so next turn, that is going to come in. I would really love this cotton tile, but I can't really purchase it at the moment because I need to use my money on these. And I think that's good. I think we bought all the tiles we need now. Now we can start using our money for important things. 81 gold? It's not really a great deal. I'm going to hold off for a better deal. I do need to meet people too. I do need a galley. I might buy a galley from this. Oh, 155, but it's, it might turn into a city state before we even get down there. Oh, well. Uh, that is going to be the boost for us, though. So let's hold off on this. Let's go into something we're not going to get the boost for. If this turns into a city-state imminently, that'll be a city-state boost for us. So we'll do that. Yeah, Hattusa this turn. So Hattusa's great. We are going to take Hattusa. That's wonderful. Um, so that is the boost for political philosophy. So we can choose a government, right? Uh, 45 gold to choose a government. That seems weird, considering I just finished a civic. What is happening? Praxis, what is going on? Praxis, I'm scared. You're scaring me. The Great Library. Is anyone building that? 
I would love it if no one's building it. It doesn't seem like people are. I mean, we are on deity, but Shaka has only two cities and Harold still only has three cities. So I don't really know what's going on. But it would lead me to believe that maybe people aren't going for the great library in the same way that they they normally would. Uh, we are going to found the city though. So let's do that. Heck yeah, that is the sailing boost. Perfect. Um, now this cannot become a city state, which is what I was trying to, to prevent. So that's, that's all good. Do I go for the Great Library? I really don't hate it. I'd love to get the Great Library. I just don't know if we can get it. We have Magnus here, and we can use Magnus for some chops. We have a good woods chop. I'm not against it. I need to chop this out to start the Great Library, though. So um, by that metric, I think we should probably just grab another builder and try and chop it out. I'm not against it. I, I'm not. I'm not completely sold either. I'll look elsewhere in the future. Hopefully by the time I settle in other city, you'll have calmed down a little bit, you know? All right, I need this cotton for the amenities, but I am aware that I can get a diamonds industry. I'm actually gonna get that diamonds industry. I don't know where to get it because I, I kind of want to get it on a tile that's already mined, but I don't know if it overrides the mine because of our Pantheon. So we'll have to see how that works. But I'll get it in one of these cities. I think getting it, this aqueduct is great. I think getting it here might make the most sense. It's a pretty low production city otherwise, but I'm not sure. But I think getting it in Xi'an might make the most sense. I love the idea of this encampment. I really, really do. The library is super helpful though. I mean, a settler here would be great too. Builder would also be great. We have, we have so much to do up here and we need Magnus up here to do it all too. So let's go for the library. All right, I'm just gonna have to pay 45 gold to get a government, which is very frustrating. I don't really know why I had to do that, but we're gonna go autocracy to at least get uh, some production towards wonders. So that, that'll help us. Uh, Natural philosophy is a great card. We're not building settlers this minute. Uh, I think if we put the wonder card in though, we can go for the great library and at least give it a, a feral dinkum try. Uh, Limitane is still fine, I suppose. And then Charismatic Leader. Ah, so he's trying to settle a city over here. I'm going to try and block him with the scout. I may or may not be successful, but we can chop this out and start getting the Great Library soon. Uh, we can chop this Aqueduct tile, and then this Aqueduct is going to be helpful as well. So a couple of chops there. Things are looking up. All right, the Builder is in. Let's get rid of these Nanners, and we'll start on our process of getting the Great Library. While that's happening, I certainly want to grab audience chamber though. Amenities and housing in city with governors is gonna be great. We're gonna have you know a smaller amount of cities trying to get to 10 population. And so getting the extra housing from the governors is gonna be super clutch. Um, there's no point in trying to be the Suze of Zanzibar, although I do wanna be the Suze of Zanzibar eventually for the amenities that it gives, but Hattusa is a great uh, city state. We're gonna be able to get those envoys in there and get the era score in this era and so that's going to be the best for for trying to get a golden age here because at some point as well we probably want a monumentality golden age i think it seems like he sent his settler back like it seems like he's not settling here anymore i, I worry that he's going to settle in this middle section instead but um that seems to be fine all right we have to harvest the resource and the uh wood or rainforest here so it's gonna be two separate turns so we'll harvest you for the food real quick then we'll chop this out next turn and start our work on the Great Library. Definitely a builder up in Taiwan is great. What sucks is we don't have feudalism. We are going to build all these farms here to get feudalism, so that's not a problem. We just don't have it quite yet. We do have 400 gold, though, and I'm not sure exactly how I want to spend it, but I suspect getting a builder in these areas here to, to build all these farms and get that population up is going to be the best play. We also have quite a bit to chop out here, too, so I'm going to buy a builder in Xi'an with some of that money. And then maybe in Chengdu, getting a granary for 260 might be worth it just to start the process of kind of elevating that city's population. Let's make sure we're selling our iron. Uh, let's make sure we're selling our Diplo favor. To be honest, we absolutely don't need it. So that's great. I have no idea where this settler went. That's very funny. That's hilarious. Next governor title is going to go to Magnus, and that is going to be surplus logistics. 20% growth in the city with Magnus, obviously helpful. Uh, trade routes um, uh, ending here give two food to their starting city, which means right now Taiwan is going to get an extra two food from trading with its Yongle time. All right, Great Bath is gone, but Great Library is still available. Um, we are going to have a problem with barbs down here, though, which I'm not excited for, um, which is unfortunate. I think we're good to go into something else, though. If we are going to have 
uh, audience chamber we do want to have governors in most of our cities and i think rain is going to be good but i think victor in one of our cities here we'll call it Gian for now is going to be helpful a little bit helpful for loyalty a little bit helpful for spies later in the game and getting them promotion so i think that's a good pick for us gonna move into a gog just in case i need to spam out a unit really quickly here to take care of these barbs they are producing swordsmen which means they are the land barbs and not the water barbs which is a little bit frustrating i could also just buy a swordsman from them for 215 if i really really need to let's build this industry here it's gonna be great for us it's gonna get gian boosted up just a little bit uh, we are going to start chopping out the uh, great library still again we're not going to get tons of production here but it's not nothing and the food is going to be helpful as well i am very much terrified for this trade route here so i will be building a swordsman in taiwan uh, i don't think i'm going to be able to save this trader but i am going to be able to at least take out this encampment it's my hope at least yeah i think the trader's done oh the trader's not done okay the trader's not done they decided to attack the slinger instead so let's try and get hopefully that's enough health hopefully that's enough health to kind of hold on a little bit here i do wonder if we're going to be able i might have to build the great wall here because i think this is coming in the next era at this point i don't think we're getting it in this era but is there any way to get one era score there's got to be a way to get one era score we are going to boost feudalism so we'll head into there and in gn it is time to start getting some districts down i'm going to start with this commercial hub not because I think it's the best possible district to get down, but more trade routes are going to be so helpful for us growing. Um, I can actually do this commercial hub here and then build the one in its Yongle time up here. So I think I'm going to do that just to get the better commercial hub more quickly. Uh, not a lot of production here, but we're going to fix that with this industrial zone one day. All right, so that Slinger died anyway, which is, again, not ideal, but I think it saved the trader, which is way more important at this point that Taiwan keeps getting uh, this food here. So that's fantastic. We are not going to be able to chop out the Great Library this turn, which is super frustrating. And I think that the borders just grew enough that I'm not going to be able to chop out or build a Great Wall either. So I do need to find a way to get one Era Score this turn. All right, I'm going to get the Era Score by buying this tile here and chopping out the Swordsman. That'll be the first Iron Unit, which has given us one Era Score indeed. So that's fine. Uh, then I can put down this encampment. I'm not sure I really desperately want this encampment, but I think it might be helpful just in the long run to have a encampment in a high production city. You just never know in Civ when you're going to need some units. So we'll work on that. I would desperately love industrial zones as soon as possible. So we're going to head there for sure. No, we lost the great library. No, no, we lost the great library. Oh, that feels so bad. That feels so freaking bad. Grr, that's infuriating. Okay, okay, take a breath. Take a breath. I thought we had that. I felt really good about that. Okay, we got, we got some of the production back. How do we want to use it? Do I just slam down this commercial hub? Let's just get a settler. I am frustrated. I, that, that is very frustrating. Um, yeah, Harold's in a Golden Age, too. Shaq is in a Dark Age, though, so maybe we'll be fine. Oh, that is infuriating. I hope we don't start losing loyalty in these cities. I'll be very sad. That, that stinks. Um, at this point, I might as well just add the plantation for the gold. No point in chopping now. Oh, that is so infuriating. Uh, Harold can generate more grievances because I'm frustrated. Oh my goodness. I thought we had that. I had to try and trade with Hattusa maybe. Uh, religious city states and 100% more grievances for Harold. So that's good. I'll take that. The best two settling options are kind of taken up by barbs at the moment. But I'm going to try and sneak up to this one here near just underneath Taiwan. Oh, I was going to build this commercial hub here, but this one next to the city is also quite good. So let's build this one instead. Oh, we need trade routes, though. Trade routes are going to get these cities to 10 pops. So that's the idea. Harold was ravaged by a natural disaster. We'll help. We'll help out our buddy Harold. We'll make sure that he's taken care of. <laughs> uh, sucker. Was that the natural disaster? Or is that just poetic justice? All right. All right. Let's chop out these rainforests. Seven, seven pop. We're, we're getting close to 10 in some places. All right. Now we have a problem because I don't think I can kill. I can't kill the skirmisher, but the skirmisher then will just kill the swordsman. My God, my unit management this game is honestly the worst. Like actually act actively terrible. 
Uh, we'll build this mine. That's fine. And then I'll I'll save for feudalism to get more builders up here. Yeah, I think we're pretty done skis with this with this swordsman. All right, sell that extra diamond. So he's gonna either have to attack me, move towards the settler, or plunder the trade route. If I attack here, I can hedge against the idea that he's going to move in other directions. I mean, this isn't really a choice at all, though, because he'll just kill me next turn anyway. So I've got to attack here and at least try. And hopefully he moves towards the settler. He might plunder the trade route. Move towards the settler, so that's all good. You heal a turn. The problem is he'll plunder the trader next turn. But then I can kill him. So he might plunder this trader, but then I might just kill him. And I can buy another trader. I have enough gold. That still sucks, but it's an option. Ah, uh, he didn't plunder it. He just moved on to it. Maybe he didn't have enough movement. That's fine. I mean, actually, Temple's gone, but I can kill this guy now. Oh, I can't believe that worked out. I can't believe that settler bait tactic worked out. Holy smokes. Okay, good, 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 good. We are almost at industrial zones, which means it's probably time to sauce this aqueduct down, which means it's probably time to get another builder to do uh, some chopperinos. And we also need more uh, farms in this area to get the feudalism boost. So let's buy a builder 325. Wow, okay, I'm starting to not be able to afford this stuff anymore. So my next kind of issue here is this isn't a very good harbor city because you settle here. There's no good harbor city here, but then you put the harbor down and I guess you get the mausoleum here, but the actual harbor itself isn't very good. That's unfortunate. Uh, let's Suze or at least <gasps> Shaka is the Suze of Hattusa. I hate everything. I honestly do. No, no, no. We need to Suze Hattusa because that's that's our city state down there, baby. That's not theirs. That's ours. Uh, Wonder card can come out because I hate everything, as previously mentioned. Uh, let's throw in the Barb card real quick to eliminate that encampment. So let's do that. And then for our other uh, gold card here, production towards wonders. Maybe production towards builders. All right, so this coastal city is going to go down here. Let's do that. Changsha. I'm going to buy a galley at the first kind of possible moment. We're just going to heal in Changsha to make sure that's all good. Uh, Taiwan, you're, yeah, get that five food, baby. You just need to keep growing. We need 10 population as soon as possible. We are going to get rid of this for the aqueduct and then put the industrial zone down. Industrial zones just got unlocked. So that'll be the general plan. And then we need feudalism. So farm it up, baby. Is that feudalism? There it is. Heck yeah. I mean, at this point, we'll just take this builder card out, put serfdom in. And then as we buy builders, they are going to have five charges, which is great. Uh, crouching tigers are going to give us error score. And at some point here... We are going to build the Great Wall, but I think in like Taiwan, I'm going to build it in these tiles that, that grow out this way as they do. Same over here. I might chop this out for the Great Wall, but I'm not I'm not in a huge rush to build it. Uh, mark it for the trade route, please. Then we'll get that last settler going. Small empire this game, hey? Very small empire. Monument, but I will put the harbor down just to have it, just to have the production locked. So that's good. And then we're going to Susa Tusa. And that unlocks Himiko, which would not be the worst for us at all. I think we are good to chop out here. I will chop out the barracks. I wouldn't mind having it. You ne again, you never know when you're going to need it. Let's put down this aqueduct. And then I'm going to go chop out this maze to get the food so we can put down the industrial zone. In Chengdu, the obvious, the obvious, obvious uh, district here would be the harbor. There's also a good campus here, but it is under a volcano, which is not my favorite. But I think we'll start with this plus three harbor. Not being able to get this build a wonder boost is infuriating after the whole the whole uh, great library saga. We can upgrade to a man of the arms, which we probably will want to do. But as long as I can kill the barbs with the swordsman, I think the gold is probably better spent on uh, builders with five charges who can start building up the empire. Speaking of which, oh, I probably want to buy a galley, actually. I probably do indeed want to buy a galley. The problem with buying a galley is I don't know where I'd go with it, considering I can't go in deep water yet. Yeah, cartography is way down here, so it's not super far out of the way. And I don't really need machinery for anything specific other than the eventual crouching tiger. Yeah, 155 here for a galley, so let's do that. We'll hire that galley, that's fine. And we'll just kind of go around. And then if I buy one more galley in Changsha, that'll be that boost. Uh, they gave us gold, not food, by the way. So if you're chopping maize, you're getting gold. Yeah, 130 gold here, too. Okay, yeah, we'll I mean, look, we'll take it. I do want to chop it in the... I can't swap tiles over. Never mind. I was going to hope to get a Magnus boost. But uh, what I can do is then buy uh, this second galley for the shipbuilding boost. So that worked out. All right, let's lock in this industrial zone just so the production is locked in here. We will need to finish this. I'm going to get a lumber mill up here. 
just to get a little extra production in Xi'an. Um, next trade route will go here, though, for some production as well. And we're going to have the same problem, I think. I think, I think, I think this skirmisher might kill this trade route, but such is life. We'll get the Man of Arms. We'll go and try and take out the encampment. Um, if we have to repurchase the trader, then we have to repurchase the trader. It's not ideal, but it's not the end of the world either. I would very much welcome the early opportunity at a second government. Monarchy is not the one that I want, but it's the one that's available early in the tech tree in this kind of shuffled up game. So we'll, we'll try and make a play for it. Next turn, we unlock another trader as well. So we want to make sure we are getting those trade routes up. Uh, I'm going to put it in Xi'an to try and get Taiwan and Xi'an to 10 population as soon as possible. All right, let's see. I'm not selling my relic. Let's see what happened to the trader. I think the trader's gone. Yeah, trader's gone. Uh, not the end of the world. A little bit frustrating, but we're going to come and kill this guy. I'll just repurchase the trader here next turn, I suppose. But yeah, you can see the the, um, the population immediately bottomed out because we don't have that food anymore. That was five food per turn, right? Yeah, I don't think this game gets anywhere without us being able to explore the map. So we're going to head straight to cartography. Building two harbors is going to happen, but not soon. And we don't have Hercules, so we're kind of just going to have to make do. Okay, military engineering boost is great. Uh, the the um, skirmisher is coming back to try and tell his buddy, the swordsman, where we live. So I think that's fine. I'm going to wait to chop this out until we have like a constant food flow happening. I want to make sure that we have Taiwan kind of growing before we make that chop. All right, so let's purchase this trader back. Super unideal to, to do it that way. But the barb life is the barb life. And we just got to... We are... We are at the mercy of what the barbs want. And you're gonna, you've built the great lighthouse, that's fine. We're just gonna take our galley through here and just see what's up, you know? In terms of yields, we're not actually that far behind. So I'm not, I'm not too worried about this game at all. Uh, my troops are genuinely merely passing by, my dude. I have no desire to fight you. At the moment, will that change? Potentially. Xi'an's gotta get to 10 pop. Taiwan's gotta get to 10 pop. Everyone's trading with Yongle. Everyone's getting that food. Let's chop out the rainforest. Eight pop there, we're, we're getting close. It's Yongle time also very, very close to that uh, 10 pop as well. So we got to make sure we're doing what we can to, to get this city going. These horses have been pillaged. There's a lot of farm tiles we can use here. Probably Builder. Now, I'm actually going to make a save game here just to check Yongle 113, just to check how this works. So it says Legia Food, a project which provides food every turn equal to half this city's uh, production. So... Do I have to complete this? Because it's 191 turns. But if I just go for it, right? If I just go for it for one turn, how much food, like how quickly can I get to 10 population by running the food thing? That's what we're going to try and find out. Because it makes it sound like we're going to be getting it every turn, not at the end of the project. So let's see. Oh, Machu Picchu just went. So that's fine too. So let's see how this works. Yeah. So that worked so well because that boosted us immediately to nine pop. Cool, 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 cool. So next turn, we're going to run this one more time to get to 10 pop right away. And from there, we can we can uh, get the bonuses. So that's great. That's super cool. Yeah, it's Yongle time. Get that five food, baby. Or I guess Jian's getting it by trading to it's Yongle time. All right. I don't know at what point they tell their friends that we exist, but you're dead. You're dead for trying. All right. So that is another district down that's going to give us some error score, which is fantastic. We appreciate that. Awesome stuff. We do have this one harbor. Is this done or is it under? No, it's under construction. Never mind. I was going to say maybe we can get this boost, but... It seems like we're not going to be able to. Machu Picchu's gone, so there's no real reason to, to do anything other than get this workshop. Um, other than uh, potentially use the, the food thing again to get to 10 population. Let's do that after the workshop, though, so we're getting more production. But I like the idea of this very much. So we're only a couple turns away from getting It's Yongle Time, Xi'an, and Taiwan to 10 pop. All right, this turn, It's Yongle Time hits 10 pop, and let's see what happens. Please don't die, please don't die, please don't die. There we go. We hit 10 population. Um, we have a problem insofar as that our swordsman is going to die, but that's okay. We're going to build some more units in Taiwan, I think. Uh, let's let's figure out this problem, though. Let's see let's see what happened here. So am I getting any boost from our ability? I am. I'm getting plus 20% or plus 20 gold from population, plus 13 from population, and plus 15 from population. That is so cool. That is so rad. I really enjoy this ability. This is super fun. I'm kind of into this. And I think that's a great place to end this video, everybody. We got It's Yongle Time to 10 population. I'm sure there's a more efficient way to get to 10 population. I'm sure I could have done this a little bit better, but this just released 10 minutes before I started playing and I'm just kind of wrapping my head around the abilities. 
Um, but this is super cool. We've got a kind of tall game going on here. A bunch of cities going to hit 10 pop. And that's how we're going to get our yields instead of spreading out into, you know, 10, 11, 12 cities. So this is super fun. If you enjoyed this, like button, subscribe button, all that kind of stuff. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next one.